Imagine this 5 meter long beam subjected to a UDL of 50 kN per meter. The bending diagram for this fixed beam shows moment of 104 and 52 kN meter at the supports and midpoint using the formula WL square by 12 and WL square by 24 respectively. While for a simply supported beam under the same load, there is no negative moment at the supports and all the moment is now in the tension zone which is 156 kN calculated using the formula WL square by 8. Let's take a 3D frame structure where secondary beams rest on primary beams. When secondary beams are not released, they cause torsion in the primary beams. Thus, they are released at supports to prevent any torsion in the primary beams. In the situation the secondary beam is not assigned any release, the bending moment looks very similar to that of a fixed beam. To have a simply supported beam which does not transfer any bending to the primary beams, release are to be assigned in E-tabs by opening the assign menu, selecting frame, then clicking on release slash partial fixity option. This menu has multiple options, but we will focus on these two which is major and minor release at start and end locations. For a beam, the horizontal axis is the major axis called axis M33 which shows major bending and vertical axis is the minor axis also called as axis M22 which shows the minor bending. So when we check the box to release major bending M33 at the start, the negative moment reduces to zero and it gets transferred to the positive moment in tension zone. The same is true if moment M33 is released at the end. The negative moment at end reduces to zero and gets transferred to the positive moment in tension zone. And releasing moment at both ends converts the beam into a simply supported beam where all the negative moment from both ends gets transferred to the positive moment or moment in the tension zone. This is simply how you can release moment in a beam in E-tabs. But how does it get translated in actual construction? What does a released beam look against a non-released beam? What differentiates them? Before proceeding, it's important to understand that a beam is a flexure member. That is, it's designed to resist bending. And while bending, there are tension and compression zones generated within the beam. Although concrete has great strength in compression, it has very low tensile strength of 0.7 root FCK. And hence, to impart tensile strength, we reinforce concrete with steel rebar. So, designing this beam in E-tabs using IS456-2000 gives the required steel in mm square. When we design a simply supported beam, since there is no negative bending, it only requires minimum steel at the top, while in tension zone, it requires more strength. For a fixed beam, to resist negative bending, the required steel is comparatively higher. The simply supported beam can be designed by providing 2 bars of 20 throughout with additional 2 bars of 20 as curtail at the bottom and 2 bars of 10 mm as top steel. For the fixed beam, we can provide 2 bars of 16 and 1 bar of 10 throughout with additional 2 bars of 16 as curtailed, while for the top steel, we can go with 2 bars of 10 mm dia throughout the length with additional anchor bars of 10 mm dia for the negative moment at both top left and top right supports. Thus, from the example, we can understand when the beam is released, no anchor bars are required at the top support since all the BMD is at the bottom. While for an unreleased beam, anchor bars are required to resist the negative bending at supports. Which is to say, members which are released at end cease to resist any moment and hence require less steel at supports when compared to members which are not released at ends requiring more steel to resist the moment at supports. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.